When it comes to concrete, we've got you covered. RowPaint.com offers custom concrete coating services for your garage, business, warehouse, and more. And we do it in one day. We are your complete concrete coatings solution. This is Bronco Nation News Live. The best interviews, the most informed opinions, the latest breaking news, all from the top Boise State insiders. Now, here's four-time NSMA Idaho Sports Writer of the Year, B.J. Rains, with another edition of Bronco Nation News Live. Well, we got to get that intro changed. We got to get this man uh, his own intro. Maybe it's the interception in the Fiesta Bowl or running out with the hammer. We'll have to see what we can uh, legally do here with the highlights. But uh, really, really excited. Appreciate everybody for joining us here at BroncoNationNews.com, the Bronco Nation News social media channels for the debut episode of the Winston Venable Show. And you don't want to hear from me. You want to hear from Winston Venable, and he is here with us. We're going to be doing this, Winston, every Wednesday at 9 o'clock, uh, schedules permitting. Uh, really looking forward to this, talking football, getting inside X's and O's, getting inside the locker room, uh, maybe bring some of your former teammates on. I mean, this is going to be a, a lot of fun, man. We've been talking about it for a few months, and we finally uh, you know, came to a little bit of an agreement, got you on board, and uh, I'm really excited, man. Welcome to the team. Hey, BJ, I appreciate it. You know, Bronco Nation News, like I told you before, man, you've been doing – some great things with this uh, right here. And uh, it gives me an opportunity to stay connected with Bronco Nation and the program that I love. And, um, you know, it's obviously I'm passionate about the game of football and we're rolling right around August here. And uh, it's a great time. You got a little CFL football on, you got the NFL rolling. And then in a few weeks, we got college football taking up September. So uh, it's an exciting time. I appreciate you having me on and I definitely look forward to uh, spending some time with you these next few Wednesdays for the next few months, man. Yeah, get a little closer to the screen if you can. You're too far away here. Let, 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 the, let, let Bronco Nation see you there, man. Uh, now we, there we go. And, and I know you had to give that CFL shout out before you mentioned NFL there in the opening uh, thing, that the CFL All-Star uh, Winston Venable what back in 2015. So, Winston, you, you, know, you, you played for this program, you coached for this program. You're doing some other things now. Uh, yeah, I know we had John an April preview in the draft. We got great, uh, you know, uh, response from that. Uh, what, what's kind of your goal, I guess, of wanting to jump on board and, and, and do this show and, and where you're at in life with, with uh, things for you? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, fortunately, I have some time to be able to dive into doing a show like this. And um, honestly, like even in my personal life, I've always been interested in uh, doing a podcast or some type of broadcasting of some sort. So with this opportunity, you know, it definitely gives me a, you know, a little bit of practice to uh, dive into your world, should I say. And um, like I said earlier, really staying connected to Bronco Nation and connected to the program, talk a little football. I mean, I love the game. So it's just easy, something that um, something that I'm excited about doing, fill up a little time with you and, and stay connected to the boys. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun again. Every Wednesday, 9 a.m., uh, we will be here with the Winston Venable Show. You can bring us your questions, bring us your comments. It's kind of uh, Winston's show, but it's your show, too, for the fans here. So uh, give us your questions, your comments, what you have, uh, you know, what you want to bring. And, and if you have a topic, you, you know, question you want to ask Winston about, we'll jump to it. You know, Joel chimes in, welcome, Winston, keep it real, and you'll be great. Uh, we got uh, Rudy saying good morning, Bronco Nation. So uh, get your comments in, get your questions in. We'll be happy to uh, pass your questions along to Winston. Uh, you know, we'll have kind of some topics we want to hit on every week, but a, a big part of the show is going to be what the what the fans, uh, you know, want to talk about each week. We'll be, you know, during fall camp, Winston kind of going through the mind of fall camp and getting ready for the season opener. And I think uh, the fun will really start once we get into the game week because we'll be able to talk about games, certain situations, play calls, things like that, and we can kind of recap previous games, look ahead to, to, to future games. Uh, I think hopefully we can uh, provide some in insight to the fans here. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I know that Bronco Nation's probably hopefully got their mind set on one game right now, and I think we're talking September 3rd, and we'll get to that a little later. But, uh, 
you know, what a great game to start this season off. And I know the boys are in camp right now, so they're probably focused on that date. And um, it'll be a really excited season. I'm, I'm looking forward to following the Broncos from a different seat this year. And, um, you know, obviously it's been awesome to be a part of that program the last five, but sitting back and, and watching it from afar is going to be awesome. And being able to talk about it, too, will be great. Well, we both are uh, broadcasting from the Canned Cutwater Cocktails studios. Uh, just like the name says, all canned cocktails, whiskey, vodka, gin, rum, tequila, all mixed right into your favorite drink, uh, ready to enjoy right away. No need to bring all the bottles of alcohol, the mixers, the sodas, ice, all that stuff. Cutwater's already done it all for you. You can enjoy a great cocktail wherever you are, whether it's out by the pool, camping up in Stanley, heck, tailgating at a football game. Just grab a can and enjoy we'll have to uh, add that to your uh, payment uh, winston we'll get you some cut water canned cocktails uh, to enjoy yeah the tequila doesn't sound too bad to me man <laughs> well it is only 907 so we'll, we'll hold off a little bit but uh, yeah we'll 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 hook you up we got some back here in the uh, back i think i have a tequila oh, somewhere so we'll uh, got the lime margarita here if that does the trick for you so yeah we'll uh, we'll, we'll add that to your uh, to your uh, payment there but we appreciate it winston you know we had the first scrimmage uh, on last saturday they have the second scrimmage coming up this Saturday. What, um, you know, for, for fans out there, that, that first scrimmage, how important is the, the first scrimmage in the evaluation process and the depth chart process and, and um, you know, that, that first scrimmage, you've had your first seven to ten days of camp and you put it all out there in that first scrimmage. Uh, take us inside, you know, the, the first scrimmage there, what that's about and what you want to get out of that as a player and a coach. Yeah, I think, you know, I think from the player perspective, those guys are probably really excited to let it loose a little bit. Um, you know, they've been grinding and they've been laying down all that foundation by all their fundamental work and technique work. And now it's an opportunity for them to put it together. And um, as much situational football as you get during the week and really work on those certain things, it's a little bit different feel when you're going out there in a scrimmage setting. It's just that urgency is heightened a little bit. And it's the same for coaches as well. Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, you're going to script a whole practice or a whole segments of practice where you know what the defense is running, you know what you're running as an offense, and you're just really following a script, a piece of paper. Um, and then it's come scrimmage time, you might go off script, a non-scripted period or two. And um, then the play callers, they got to understand the situation and come up with their best call. So that first scrimmage is uh, it's an exciting time for the program just because they're able to let it loose. And then it also gives you that test. Hey, where are we at? You know, and then, like you said, the competition is everything where guys are really able to let it loose and compete and put that on tape in this setting that is now, you know, a heightened sense of urgency where, hey, now the lights are on. How are you going to perform? It, after the first scrimmage that next day when you go watch the film, I mean, I mean, is the depth chart unofficially set? I mean, do you have an idea of who the guys are going to be after that first scrimmage or, or is that first scrimmage that next week going into the second scrimmage, truly the time? I mean, how, I, how early, I guess, do you start really evaluating versus letting guys get, get going? And, and when is that time where it's like, okay, I've seen what I need to see. And, and what's this week like between the first scrimmage and the second scrimmage going into the second scrimmage? Yeah, I think, I think, uh, there's going to be some position battles. There might be some seniors that have been four-year starters and have really solidified their spot and, of course, are competing. And I think um, they're really just maintaining where they're at and continuing to perform well, but they ha they might have a spot uh, secured. I mean, I want to say any, any spot is secure, but let's keep it real here. I mean, there's going to be some positions out there where you got a an you know all Mountain West player. It's done really well for the last couple of years, and not as much depth behind him. So at a certain position, it might be known that X player is going to be the starter. Now there might be some young guys uh, battling for ba backup positions, and the reps that those guys got, kind of the younger guys. That's where some of those where you lay on the depth chart is really going to get ironed out through these scrimmages. So uh, that first scrimmage is super important when it comes to the competition. I think it just depends on what spot uh, that you're talking about, you know, uh, who's competing out there and what's their age and experience and all that plays a major factor into, you know, giving a guy more time to compete going into the next scrimmage or what. But that second scrimmage is, is kind of it, right? You got school starting next Monday. They got the scrimmage on Saturday. That that kind of final chance to, to earn your spot is, is, next, is coming up here in a couple of days on Saturday. And then you want to have that – depth chart, the scout team, all that kind of set going into when school starts and, and having two weeks before the game, right? Yeah, absolutely. You, you hit it right there. That 
that first week, like we're really getting down to the last hard week of camp. I mean, this is the end of camp come, you know, Saturday scrimmage or whatnot. It's, it's really it. Cause you get into a, what we'd call like a bonus week next week. And that's probably where they're going to start focusing on Oregon state. And I'm sure they've sprinkled that in a little bit already, but uh, next week is really considered a bonus week. And like you said, school's going on. So you're going to mimic what it's going to look like week one of the season. Uh, so like you said, there's depth charts and all those things are getting ironed out, but uh, they'll still be competing all the way through till game day. I mean, honestly, they're, they're going to, uh, they're always going to be competing out there on the blue. So we know uh, the coach they, speak. We know the coach speak. You're always competing. Yeah. Nothing's ever set. The depth chart's just a piece of paper. We, we hey, hear it all, Winston. Like I said, you know, there might be some positions out there, BJ, that are, are more solidified than others, but uh, you're always competing out there. You go as a running back, have a few fumbles game week. Coaches aren't going to be too happy going into that game or too confident with you. Well, there's a couple uh, position battles, things we want to talk about and hear from uh, Billy Bowens, hear from the new corners coach, Demario Warren, as well. But first, want to thank a couple of our great sponsors, Idaho Central Credit Union. See why over 500,000 members love Idaho Central Credit Union. That's one in four Idahoans, members of ICCU. You can manage your Idaho Central Credit Union accounts online anytime, anywhere with eBranch Mobile Online Banking. You can learn more at ICCU. Dot com. If you're looking for a career change, a fresh start, uh, just something new, you're not happy with your life, transportation compliance service can help you, whether it's uh, you know hauling a big 18-wheel rig or if you want to just be an Amazon driver and drive one of those uh, Amazon vans, they can help you with all the permits, all the things you need to get started. Uh, it's a really great locally owned company that helps folks all over the world. They just signed up Jason Witten, the former NFL tight end, uh, for one of his tour buses or RVs or something. So check them out, transcomservice.com. Uh, they can help you out. United Commercial Insurance as well, unitedcommercialinsurance.com. Uh, Bronco Nation News is a client. We use our workers' comp insurance, some of the other insurance through them. Uh, very easy, quick process, all done online. So if you own a business or if you run the business insurance uh, for your business, a quick call, 229-8222, could save you hundreds of dollars. And, again, they're a local company that can write business insurance policies in 44 states around the country. So make sure to check them out, United Commercial insurance we do have some comments some questions coming in uh, nate staley did ask about if this point in training camp they're already focused on oregon state and you mentioned they're kind of sprinkling it in a little bit but uh you're probably right about the uh you know once you get through camp then you get that bonus week which is kind of like a, a practice game week for a game week right and that's probably when yeah. the coaches will start diving into the film and stuff yeah absolutely and, and and don't get me wrong i mean the whole summer the coaches are probably looking at Oregon State and figuring out what installs and what plays they want to run and what their weaknesses are because, you know, you, you have your base installs, but you still want that to be focused on your first opponent or first four opponents that you're probably looking at through the summer and getting a, a head start on those guys. So um, the plays that they're running, the defenses they're running, I'm sure have a little bit to do with what Oregon State's doing. But when it comes down to it, if you focus on yourself, uh, the first couple games of the season, what are the things that happen? You got missed tackles and you got turnovers. So if you're really focused on yourself, you're probably going to be all right all the way up until game week because you got to make sure those fundamentals are taken care of or otherwise you're going to shoot yourself in the foot. You mentioned defense, and we already got people looking ahead to the Air Force game. Winston, uh, JD's wanting to know, I uh, know I'm ahead of schedule by a month or two, but what does the defense need to do to stop the triple option of Air Force? Any thoughts on the Air Force having to go on the road this year to Air Force? I know it's you know six, seven games into the season, but uh, they're you know a team that uh, got some first-place votes, I believe, to, to win the division this year, or at least uh, should be up there. And, and never an easy game when you play Air Force, huh? Yeah, no, absolutely not. And, you know, the, the past five years that I was with Boise, you know, there's we talk about the summertime and getting ahead on opponents. And that's always one that you're going to you're going to throw a little bit of triple option into your summer work plan uh, to make sure you're not just starting to work on that week one. So uh, I'm sure Coach Avalos, the defensive staff, you know, they got a great plan on on how they're sprinkling that in. And it's a big focus. It always is every year. And yeah, it's, it's about playing discipline, doing your job. Um, and there's, you know, sometimes being simple is better playing a team like that. And you just got to have great eyes and do your job. So uh, got a lot of faith in what Coach Av and Coach Spencer are doing on the defensive side. So those guys will be all right. And I'm sure they'll time up their preparation. Yeah, we'll worry about Air Force next month. We'll talk about the triple option more when we get there. But speaking of defense, Joel was wondering, it says BSU used to have great success running the 4-2-5 defense. 
Uh, do you think there's a move back to that, or is there no set formation to base the defense from anymore? Yeah, I think there's a lot of creativity. I mean, you, there might be some sets where it looks exactly like a 4-2-5, and really, how are you classifying that fifth defender, the nickel, uh, as he a linebacker? I mean, there's there's all sorts of things that you can do, and that's the cool thing about uh, Boise State's defense is uh, there, there's a variety. They mix it up. They don't have a, a specific identity um, other than, you know, running to the ball with great passion and being good tacklers. And um, so uh, defensively, scheme wise, you got one of the best in that building leading the show. Uh, so I think they'll be just fine with the variety of schemes that they use. A couple uh, position battles, a couple – well, there's a lot of position battles, but one that's intriguing to me is wide receiver. When we had you on in April, uh, Winston, we were previewing the NFL draft, and we talked a lot about Khalil Shakir and what he means to the team. And, um, I mean, that, you know, really no shying away from it or denying it. That's one of the biggest storylines on the whole team, uh, not just the offense. How do you replace the production of Khalil Shakir – um, the, the third down ability to make that big catch on third down, the fact that everybody in the stadium knew he'd be getting a lot of the balls thrown his way and he'd still find a way to do it. Um, to lose Khalil Shakir uh, is obviously a huge loss, but how, how do you look at that wide receiver group? I mean, you, you coached the offense last year, saw all those guys in practice, and, um, you know, what, what do you make of that receiver group trying to replace Shakir, and do you think there's enough talent there? Yeah, well, I think you said it, the – the group needs to replace Shakir and not one person needs to replace Shakir. And I think if anybody is in that room feeling that they need to be the guy that steps up and replaces Shakir, then that's not going to be a great thing. But collectively, you know, if you look at that roster, there's some young guys stepping up, uh, Jalen Richmond, Austin Bolt, you know, guys like that, that we haven't heard a whole lot about um, that I think are going to make a little splash in this next coming season. So Collectively, I think the wide receiver group has, you know, stronger numbers, strength in numbers, as you could say, uh, than we've had in the past. And it's great. We've had great receivers. But um, I think this group and Coach Miller going into, you know, another year with the program there with Coach Plow and their connection and their chemistry. And uh, I think that wide receiver group dudes in there that will collectively, you know, fill that gap that. No, Khalil left. Well, one of those guys, Billy Bowens, trying to take that step forward. He's been one of the guys we've heard a lot about uh, from coaches and players in terms of really taking that next step. Uh, he spoke to the media yesterday, and here's Billy Bowens on the opportunity he now has to take that next next step forward at wide receiver. Um, it's been a really fun camp. This has probably been my most fun camp I've had since I've ever been playing football. So, I mean, that's some good to say for sure. You know, every day I just want to get better, whether that's – up here in the film room, mentally understanding our assignments and the schemes of what's going on or just going out there and physically getting better with the reps, route running, you know, just learning my body, having that body control and um, being the best receiver I can be in and out of breaks, being sharp at the top of routes and just I focus on whether it's catching balls, you know, stationary or moving, whatever the case may be, just trying to be the best player I can be each and every time I uh, step out in the field. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, my biggest thing is just grit, right? Grind it out. Um, really that blue collar mentality that's been developed that I've, you know, had from my family, my upbringing, we stick things out, you know, when times get hard, when things get rough, my life was never easy. You know, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like it was, but you know, you got to fight, you know, and that's the biggest thing I want to show my siblings and my brothers, you know, you got to fight, you got to fight and be a role model for them. You can make it through rough times, you know, you can be better than the, the outcomes and you can beat the odds. So that's my biggest thing. Just staying here. I know they love me here. I love it here. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. So, you know, just trusting that process, that's the biggest thing for me, trusting the process, trusting these coaches and those players up there, knowing that we'll get it done. Yeah, I mean, I just keep my head down and grind. Keep my head down and grind. Grind in the shadows, you know, I always tell myself the real will prevail. You know, there's no need to try and do extras or go out of my framework. Just stay true to who I am. I've done it before. It's nothing new. And just work your way up from the bottom. And time will, show, time will tell, you know. What's done in the dark will come to light. So just keep working when the lights are off. And my time will come and it'll show. Um, I'm so excited. I can't wait to show what I've been working for. You know, I know it's been a long, rough four years for me, but I've been prepping for this moment my whole life. You know, so it's not just these years. It's everything leading up to this, you know, just knowing the game, learning the game, studying the game, watching other people, other guys, you know, just I'm so excited to show what I can do. And um, I'm so excited for this team and what we're about to bring to the table. Only uh, 17 career catches for Billy Bowen's the last four years. Winston, uh, you know, he, you heard him say he grinds it out. It's, a, you know, a, 
mentality, a blue collar thing. I mean, I'd asked him, Hey, a lot of guys would have transferred by now, man, with the transfer portal, wanting to play earlier, maybe be missing his family. You know, he wasn't playing a lot early in his career, battled some injuries, but uh, you know, he, he stuck it out and he seems like one of those guys that's uh, going to get an opportunity here to uh, finally get, finally, you know, make that weight worth it and get some playing time. Yeah. Billy's a, a true Bronco and, and it's awesome seeing that interview right there just because, like you said, he's he's had some injuries, and uh, Billy's never wavered. His attitude has been just what you saw right there on the interview. I mean, great attitude, and uh, you know his response to his injuries has always been with that attitude that's carried him through his four years. So um, hopefully, you know he can stay healthy uh, with that that mindset that he has, and go be productive in his you know final year, you know as a Bronco and and get after it. So very excited to see what Billy's got going on this year and for him to have a productive season. I got to figure that out. I think technically you may still have one of those weird COVID years of it. Yeah, he probably does. Yeah. I, I, I think he's a red shirt. I, I think he's a red shirt senior, but he might actually, it's so weird now with the roster and our guys done. And you also have the thing where you could play in the four games and still red shirt. So he played in one game in 2018, yeah. but it didn't actually count. So I'm looking at the stats. And I'm like, well, he's been, this is his fifth year in the program, but he still has two, like one, another one after this, the whole thing's hard oh, yeah. to figure out. But what, um, what's that mindset like for a player where, they see guys in front of them on the depth chart. They see older guys. They've had injuries. They know they're probably not going to have big roles. You know, it's, it's tough to go to, to, to go to practice every day knowing you're not going to, you know, potentially be an impact guy. And then for that to finally change and have an Octavius Evans leave, a Khalil Shakir leave, and finally look up and say, hey, I got a chance at, you know, to, 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 to start or to get a lot of balls here. I mean, what is that? That whether it's receiver or running back, you know, no. when Halani would go down and, and T. Crow had to step up. I mean, what, what what's that do to guys when they finally see that opportunity for, for bigger playing time? Yeah, I think it's sheer excitement. You know, uh, they're getting hyped up and they're they're getting anxious and hopefully not in a bad way. You know, anxious, like Billy's saying, to to show what he's been working on for four years. So um, a lot of it, a lot of excitement, the right type of angst and. Uh, yeah, the ability to go out there and, and do what you've dreamt of doing and playing in front of thousands of fans or national TV, you really just the opportunity to seize your moment. And as a competitor, I mean, that's what you're trying to do, right? I mean, you're trying to get out there and compete and, and show your stuff. And there's no better place than Bronco Nation, you know, watching you and all those type of things. So it's a it's a fun deal to be able to run out there and and contribute to to games for the Broncos. Hey, uh, we had a question about the running backs, and we'll get to that in just a second. But uh, first, a quick word from Lithia Ford. Right now, Lithia Ford of Boise is buying used vehicles. How much you want for the SUV? Uh, I don't know. Well, Lithia Ford will give you more than that. How much more? More than you think. I'm not thinking anything. I'm thinking you might get even more than that. See how much more you can get at Lithia Ford of Boise. Now with NIL deals, you got Riley Smith doing commercials for Lithia. I got one of those in the can we can uh, play at some point. But uh, it's a new world now, man. If you were still coaching, uh, you got NIL, you got Transfer Portal. I mean, it's not the same game you played uh, back in 20, 2010, huh? Yeah, no. I, I was trying to figure out, like, what kind of NIL deals I would be able to to get. Oh, you'd have had some back in the day, man. Like a, demolition, like a demolition company or something just, like, running through a wall. I, I just have a vision of that. Otherwise, I'm not too sure. I'm sure there have been plenty of companies uh, eager to have you support them back when you were uh, picking off balls in the Fiesta Bowl and doing big things that you were doing. Uh, we got uh, some comments rolling in here. Uh, you know, obviously being the running backs coach the last two years, a uh, question about the running backs and Tyler Crow. Uh, do you think he'll be the third and short goal line beast this year uh, to help take the beating from George? Uh, or what do you make in terms of what you think they might do with the, uh, the pecking order there in terms of, uh, you know, a featured back or, or spreading it out a little more? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think Crow kind of landed in that spot last year a little bit. I mean, with Van Buren as far as being that short yardage goal line type of guy. So, you, I mean, you need one of those guys. Uh, I mean, you can't always throw it down there on the goal line. I mean, you got to pound that thing in there every once in a while. Or you got to know whole crowd, whole nation knows that we're going to run it because it's time to run it. So you got to have a guy and, and George can do those things. But you know, great question because you, you don't always want to have that star running back taking that type of beating. But um, also, you know, T. Crow's got a knack for that. I mean, he's got a little nose for for getting that one, two yards and finding that end zone. So, yeah, I, I would imagine that T. Crow would be 
kind of that short yardage goal line back for the Broncos. I, this year. I know you want to get more guys involved and do all that, but I mean, George Solani had one rushing touchdown last year. I mean, you gotta, well, you gotta just feed the beast, right? I mean, wh- wh- why do you have to have? I mean, I, we all love Tyler Crow. His dad's a great dude. I mean, we, we, you know, but but I mean, you know, and I know Ashton Gentry is going to do some big things. Yeah. You want to get them involved too. Um, but, uh, I mean, Andrew Van Buren was like second or third in the Mountain West in rushing touchdowns last year or something. And he had, you know, his percentage of yards rushing versus touchdown was like, I've never seen before. I mean, what don't, don't you want to let your, your big dog eat too? I mean, shouldn't Joe, why can't George just get those carries? Yeah. I think, I think at, at some point you let the big dogs eat. And I think there's certain situations that that's what happens. And, um, there are some people that are better at certain things than others. And that's the bottom line. And it's college. You want to play all the guys that you can. I know it's big time and you're trying to win, but if there's a guy that does something a little bit better, maybe he's carving out a little role for himself. So um, I agree, though. Sometimes you got to keep it in your star's hands and let him go and, and eat. But, uh, you know, T. Crow might be that guy that's just a little bit better in those situations. We'll hey, if see. you need if you need your new Boise State gear, the blue and orange store.com has it for you. All the new coaches, sideline apparel, all the new Boise State gear. You can check them out. Boise Town Square Mall, their uh, second floor next to Pro Image. If you're not in the Boise area, you can get free shipping on any order over $40. So check them out. The blue and orange store, the best spot to get your Boise State gear for the upcoming season. Uh, Demario Warren, the new cornerbacks coach. I'm not sure how much uh, interaction you've had with him, but obviously, you know, he came in after you had left. Uh, he comes in as, you know, the head coach at Southern Utah for six years, now takes over the cornerback room, and he's got one of the more intriguing battles at camp. You know, four guys who all started at least four games last year back thinking they should play yeah. again. Uh, but here's uh, Demario Warren talking about uh, his group and the competition there. It just makes it competitive. Uh, there's so many talented players out there. Uh, you got to be consistent, not only uh, with your technique, but also the scheme, the situation, a lot of things going on. But they're so supportive, and they just care every single day. So that's what I love about our group. They care. They go out there and compete for the defense, compete for the team, and they just they just want to win at the end of the day. Do you have two starters yet, or how's the competition going? It's been going good. I, we just got to full strength. Like I said, today was like the first day. We tried to get everybody full reps, um, and so that's been good. So we, we'll see how it all goes. We still got another week of camp, and – uh, and we got two more weeks before game week, so it'll be it'll be interesting. But again, we're at corner position, so we need a lot of guys to be good, a lot of guys to stay healthy, and a lot of guys to go out there and compete and win. Uh, they're learning from each other, uh, and every time we get out there and make a mistake, we're trying to fix it the next day. And so that's the encouraging part about our group, and uh, we're going against a good offense. So those receivers are are talented, and every single week it's going to be on us to to make sure that we win on one on ones. And so it's going to be uh, important for us to make sure that we're locked in and, and being consistent every play because. Uh, one play can equal six points, and, and we got to make sure that every play that we're locked in and doing our job. Consistency, understanding situations, I think those are the two things that we've been better at, uh, making sure that our eyes are more consistent. And then, um, again, making mistakes in situational football. We've played so much situations uh, throughout spring and throughout fall uh, that our guys are starting to understand, understanding the technique, the basic technique in spring. And now we're saying, okay, well, when this happens, you can do this. And in this situation, you should probably play it like that. And they're just learning and growing every day. And so I appreciate Coach Avalos putting in those situations. And then uh, we're learning from it every time we get in one. It's awesome. It's a, t- a testament to the, the guys that came before me. Uh, we've, they've had great coaches uh, for a long time. So it's, it's just me making sure that I see where I can help at. And at the end of the day, that's what I'm here for, is to make our, te- our group the best group they can be. And so just seeing what they need, what, what's, what's their weaknesses and their, and their techniques uh, and individually too. So as a group, as a whole, but also individually, getting to work with Markel, getting to work with Nohi, and seeing how I can help them grow in their techniques and, 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 their, and their movement patterns. As a first-year coach, Winston, you went through this a couple years ago. I mean, I know you had been in the program and stuff, but uh, what's it like as a first-year coach trying to gain the trust of your players in your room, trying to uh, come in, establish your own, you know, thing, but also not, you know, uh, disrespect or do anything different than previous coaches? Uh, you know, y- y- your position group, your four, five, six guys, I mean, that's a – you have a special bond with those guys, right? So, I mean, what's yeah. that like? What do you think that's like uh, you've been in those shoes, somebody like Demario coming in as a first-year corners coach? Yeah, well, you know, for him, I, I would, you know, if I put myself in his shoes, you know, he's has experience, you know, he has experience coming into the room. So I'm sure he carries himself with some confidence and that experience has, you know, he's been able to gain a bunch of knowledge and uh, coaching tools through that time. So I would imagine, you know, you can come into a new environment, but with the rest of the coaching staff and the type of kids that Boise State has, I mean, there really is this brotherhood where you take in the new member, you take in the new staff member, the new player. And 
hopefully he's comfortable where then he can just have his confidence and, you know, rely on his experience to get him through, you know, meetings and whatnot. But yeah, uh, building a connection with the players is going to be huge for a first year guy, uh, a little bit different than me since I, like you said, I was involved in the program, but yeah, he's definitely going to want to build that trust and that relationship with the guys because that's where it all starts. I mean, you can't BS guys. They'll see right through that. And uh, you got to be true, a true person and true to yourself. Uh, so the, the guys can trust and believe you and they understand who you are as a not just a football coach, but as a person. And quickly, I mean, any thoughts on the cornerback battle? I mean, like I said, four guys that all played at least four games last year. You know, Caleb Biggers came in from Bowling Green at the end of the year and played really, really well when he took over starting eight of the last nine games. Markel Reed, you know, a lot of hype, a lot of potential, but injuries have just held him back during his career. He's healthy. We talked to him yesterday as well. He's ready to go. And then you got uh, Tyreek LaBeouf, who's been, you know, know, had a pick six in that – uh, two interceptions UCF. in the pick six in the UCF game. You know, uh, uh, call Kenio's brother. Uh, Noe Kenio comes in and, and plays well in some of the games that he started. Uh, what, what do you make of that cornerback battle and having to pick two? Yeah, well, and, and Coach said it there in the interview. I mean, he needs he needs more than two. So uh, he's feeling good. You pick two for this week, and it might be a different two next week. And that and that's the that's the beauty of it. And that's just that's just real. I mean, you can't think that you're going to go into the whole season and have the same two corners. You know, it's a lot of the positions. I mean, you can be very fortunate to have a guy that doesn't get injured or is that playing at an elite level, especially out there on an island. I mean, that's a vulnerable position. So you can get exposed pretty quick out there and it might be a rotation, might be certain matchups that, hey, Tyreek LaBeouf's a long corner. You know, maybe they're going for a little more length versus some wide receivers that are longer. So I see all four of those guys playing a lot as a coach. I'm liking that I got that battle going on and probably feeling comfortable with having a rotation of any of those guys starting for me. Well, uh, we already went over time on the very first show of the uh, the year here, but there's a couple of final comments here. Uh, uh, let's see here. Nate says, uh, sad I can't call the running back room a pack of Winstons anymore. <laughs> well, Nate, that's all right. Those guys, uh, you find a new name for them. <laughs> uh what perry wants to know quickly how many wins do you predict for the broncos this season oh that's tough do i have to Maybe no, but I, are you feeling are you feeling it's going to be better than seven and five i mean do you feel like andy's got this thing going in the right direction oh absolutely yeah definitely second year head coach you know it's his first year last year he's got a couple of new guys on staff but uh I'm, I'm sure he's making adjustments and you know andy's andy's gonna have that program up and running the way it's supposed to be i'm a firm believer in that and the schedule seems pretty favorable as far as the Broncos going out there and doing their thing. So, yeah, I got a. I'm rooting for the Broncos having a much better season than seven and five. We can't get all the questions. I apologize. We'll get to one more though. Rudy wants to know how your dad's doing. Says he grew up a Giants fan. Remember him playing. I know your brother is coaching as well too. Give us the family update here. Yeah, yeah. Pops is uh, actually out here in Boise, Idaho. Moved out a couple years ago, doing some local baseball stuff and. Uh, brothers, the bench coach for the Boston Red Sox. So he's mid season doing his thing. And, um, yeah, everybody is well on this side. The, the baseball fam is doing good. Well, Winston, you are now officially technically a media member. How's it feel? Hey, you're going to let me know how we did BJ. And then we'll, <laughs> uh, we'll make some adjustments and get better at it, but it feels pretty good knocking out this day one. And, uh, Looking forward to the next one. Yeah, we got some cool uh, ideas and plans moving forward. Hoping to get some of your former teammates on. We'll catch up with some of them. I know there's one in particular fans probably want us to try to get on at some point. But, uh, you know, there's uh, a lot of uh, connections you have that we hope to take advantage of and your insight, your knowledge into the locker room. And, yeah, we've had uh, record viewership today, Winston. So uh, fans are excited to have you on and be watching, and it's going great. So we uh, certainly appreciate this. And uh, we'll try every Wednesday at 9 o'clock to see if we can get a little better. And as I said, I think once we get uh, into the season here, it's going to be a little more fun to actually be able to break down game footage, maybe even put some clips up here on the screen and talk about some stuff. I mean, I think it's going to be fun. No, I'm looking forward to it. Get get a, get my study and going and check out some of these opponents too and, and stay locked in on this season. Really looking forward to talking some, uh, some Bronco football with you, DJ. Appreciate it, Winston. There he is, Winston Venable. Make sure you follow him on Twitter, Winston Venable. Uh, we will be uh, telling you some exciting, cool stuff about what he's doing uh, business-wise uh, here as we move forward in, in future episodes. He's doing some cool things with uh, some former Boise State players and so excited to tell you about um, the company he's working with and, and uh, what he's doing for that as well moving forward here. Um, but uh, that'll do it for today's show. He's Winston Venable. I'm BJ Rains. We hope you will subscribe. You can use that Fall Camp promo code. Uh, Fall Camp 22 is the promo code. Just Fall Camp 
Camp 22 on the website to get the uh, discounted uh, price. And we got some cool things. Another one of your uh, former coworkers joining the family. I can't announce yet as well moving forward. Uh, we got some cool other announcements in the works, but uh, this is a big one to get Winston Venable on board, and we're very excited. And uh, we're, We appreciate your time, man, and we will uh, certainly talk to you next next Wednesday at 9 o'clock. So he's Winston Venable. I'm BJ Rains. This has been the Winston Venable Show here at Bronco Nation News, bronconationnews.com. Have a great day. If any news breaks, as always, we'll pop back on. You can read my story about Billy Bowens right now at bronconationnews.com, and I will be back tomorrow with Mike Prater, KTIK Radio, 9 a.m., uh, to talk some fall camp as well. So have a great day. Bronco Nation News, bronconationnews.com. At ICCU, to make a difference, it takes just one connection, a friendly face, an open ear, a helping hand. And then something amazing happens. We find out that we're better together. This is what Idaho Central does in our communities every day. We help our members with the small things, and big dreams. This is what believing in you is all about. Idaho Central Credit Union, looking after your daily balance.